occasionally I hear people say, uh, you know, if, I, if I'm going to have an addiction, the one that I want is a sex addiction. I want to be a sex addict. You'll never hear a sex addict say that, though. Someone that has struggled with that, you know, they don't see any glamour in it. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not something that, you know, people laugh about on sitcoms. It's uh, somebody who has been involved in behavior that has hurt them and hurt somebody else, and they want desperately to stop, and they've tried any number of things. Been to doctors to say, I, you know, I've got to have something to lower my sex drive. Uh, have been to therapists, have been to counselors, and and they learn different communication techniques. They learn a number of other things and never really zero in on the sex addiction. But once they can zero in on the sex addiction and find out, first of all, this is a real disorder, and not only is it a disorder that, that is uh, real, but it's treatable. And if it's treatable, they you know they can get help. They can stop. What I want people to know from the first time that I sit down with them is there is hope. Uh, usually when I sit with a person for the first time, they, they have a feeling of hopelessness. Uh, and they, they don't see any, any way to pick life up again and, and make it go. People want to know, why am I a sex addict? Well, what I can tell them is that, that we may be able to go back and find a number, a number of things that have contributed to their sex addiction but most likely will not be able to go back and say, here is the one event in your life, or here's the one factor that uh, has uh, resulted in you becoming a sex addict. Well, sex addiction is really an intimacy disorder. I, I think everyone has inside them a desire for intimacy. And often what happens with someone who has a sexual addiction or who is a sex addict, they are looking for intimacy and instead of finding intimacy they put other things in there to to try to fill that void and it may feel like intimacy but it's really not it's kind of a false intimacy in fact often what people do they will substitute intensity for intimacy and the more intense something is you know the higher high the the more they may feel like it's satisfying but it's it's really empty and to me, sex addiction is not defined by a particular behavior that a person does. You know, I'll have people come to me and say, you know, I've had an affair. I must be a sex addict. Well, that's not the definition of what uh, makes a person a sex addict. Having an affair or even having um, maybe more than one affair. Or because somebody looks at pornography, they say, you know, I must be a sex addict. Well, maybe, but maybe not. It's true that a person um, may be involved in any one of those behaviors and be a sex addict, and yet at the same time they could, they could be doing those and not be a sex addict. I've got a, a real short screening tool that I use. Uh, question one, have you ever engaged in behavior, sexual behavior, that's hurt you or somebody else? Question two, did you do it again? You know, and if the answer to both of those is true, then maybe they've got a problem. Maybe it's something they want to address. The things that I look for uh, is, is the behavior out of control. Has a person tried to stop and found themselves unable to do it? Have they, um, do they see the behavior progressing? Do they make promises to stop? Maybe even... Uh, you know, heartfelt promises uh, to a wife, vows to God, I'll never do it again, and they mean it, only to find that they go back and do that behavior again and again. Uh, oftentimes, sex addicts will be able to look back and find that, that with enough information, I mean, if they can really go back and look at their childhood objectively, may find that they've got a parent who's a sex addict, a mom or a dad, or a grandparent, and you know, that... That by the time you get back to grandparents, if there is a sex addiction there, uh, that's the family secret. Uh, and in fact, most sex addicts know that the only reason they are in treatment for sex addiction is they finally were caught. So when they, they go back and look at their parents, they say, no, my dad's not a sex addict or my mom's not a sex addict. And yet, if we would ask that person's children, 
If they thought they were a sex addict, they would say no because they didn't see any evidence of it. An early exposure to pornography is another factor. Finding, uh, you know, maybe finding uh, parents' pornography or, or uh, going to spend the night with a friend and, and a friend brings out a, a, a box of pornography or an older brother, an older sibling has some pornography. That early exposure to pornography has a profound impact and even more so today. Now, people my age and older, uh, the first pornography they saw was some, some airbrushed image or frankly, people my age or older, it wasn't the airbrushed images, the old black and white detective magazines. It's something that, that uh, with, a, with a big dark bar here and a, a dark bar uh, obscuring part of the picture and, and the imagination would just go wild with that. Um, and yet now what kids see, it's very graphic. You know, it's a hardcore pornography. And uh, that has a, a, a tremendous impact on a person's psyche. Other factors, abuse. Uh, and it's not just sexual abuse. Could be, um, could be psychological abuse. Could be uh, some kind of emotional abuse. I think a, a person's uh, religion may, may play a part and it may be a significant factor and you know there, there's not a religion anywhere in the world that would intentionally set someone up for being a sex addict however the the more fundamental beliefs are the more black and white the more you know this is right this is wrong uh, more the more of that kind of mentality that a person gets from a religious system or from a from a, a church or any kind of of uh, uh, worshiping body, the more of that, the more the idea that there's something wrong with sex. Maybe sex is shameful, so it's something we don't talk about. Another factor, the lack of sex education. Um, and I'm talking about parents giving their, their kids uh, the proper explanations. You know, we, we usually think it's just the opposite. If somebody, uh, you know, they get sex education, maybe, maybe that's the uh, the thing that's going to encourage them to go be sexual. Well, that's that's not the case. It's the lack of that. When and in the in the vacuum uh, that's there, a person will try to, to fill that void. Uh, they they look for answers and they get their sex education uh, in a locker room or uh, on a pornographic video. So these are some of the factors, and that's uh, not by any means all of them. There, there are many things that could, could, could contribute to a person becoming a sex addict. You know, some people look at it as, as being primarily a moral problem. Uh, and certainly there's a moral aspect to it. And depending on a, a person's faith perspective, you know, that may be the thing that's the, the prime driver to them. You know, this is immoral behavior. Well, what I believe is, yes, the behavior is immoral, but the problem is there's an addiction going on. It's not that they don't know the difference between right and wrong. The, the problem is they go back and do those behaviors again that they find destructive, that they find hurtful, that hurt other people, and they don't want to do them, and they want to stop. I want them to know there's hope and that they can get free and stay free.